dongles, docks, hubs. <laughs> Fuck them. I could not stand these pieces of junk when I first got my M1 MacBook. I bought myself this one right here, it's from a brand called Satechi. It looked decent enough and got actually pretty good reviews on most sites. And I could also use it on the go. Hey, what could go wrong, right? It has two USB-C ports and uses up both of your USB-C ports on your MacBook. In return you get additional two USB-A ports and an SD slot and an HDMI port to connect your monitor to. Ok, let's be real, this thing is hot garbage. It disconnects frequently when moving the MacBook 1cm. Its read and write speed is incredibly slow, the HDMI only works every fifth try or so, it has problems with charging and writing files at the same time, and much more things to actually complain about. And it costs 69 euros. I used it for a year, but now, after such a long time, I actually had enough. After some research, I invested 30 euros more for a total of 99 euros into a dock that could do it actually all. Let me introduce you to my all-in-one solution for my home office connection needs. This right here is the CalDigit Soho USB-C dock. CalDigit? I have never heard of it before. This small 99 euro dock has all the connections I need. It's strikingly small and can be used as your desktop dock or actually on the go. Let's actually look into how I use it while actually talking about all the connections and ports and things it offers. The first great thing the Soho dock does is actually, well, it doesn't need any kind of power. It works out of the box, but has a distinct advantage over all the other USB-C docks out there. It has a 100 watt USB-C pass through to your laptop charging function. Whew, meaning it charges my MacBook while powering all the other devices connected to it as well. Meaning to square I guess I can charge the laptop as well as my phone if I want to and maybe even my iPad directly through the dock if it is a USB-C iPad while still working with it. <laughs> Fantastic. Also, it only has one USB-C connection as an output that supports a 10 gigabit connection to your laptop, which makes the Soho dock twice and I repeat it, twice as fast as a regular 5 gigabit dock. All while still charging your laptop and in my case actually giving me the ability to connect another USB-C device straight to my M1 MacBook. If you may ask why the 10 gigabit per second is such a definitive advantage over traditional docks, well I guess you haven't transferred hundreds of gigabytes from a two day shoot onto a server or your backup hard drive yet, huh? Regular docks are still using the USB-C 1 standard, while the Soho dock is using USB-C 2 and therefore it actually doubles its speeds. This also goes for the USB-A port on the front, which is also a 10 gigabit connection. Something small on the other hand, but also very handy, is that the main USB-C cable connecting to your device from the Soho dock is detachable, making this a very easy to replace thing if it's broken or if you actually need a longer cable in the future, while other docks can be thrown straight into the trash after a cable breakage. Also very handy, especially when shooting with mirrorless cameras. And in my case with the ZV-10, hello ZV-10, is this S... <laughs> the SD card slot on the front allowing for either full SD cards or micro SD cards to be inserted. Since recording my audio through a different device, it is very welcome to use both cards at the same time and spares me another couple of minutes each time while actually editing. When we look at the back, we see that the Soho dock has one HDMI and one DisplayPort connection, allowing to add two displays simultaneously with one connection coming from the M1 MacBook, meaning you can output up to two mirrored 4K 60Hz displays, making this the perfect dock for editing your content. I'm mostly using my MacBook display as well as one single 4K 60Hz display for editing in Resolve. And then lastly, the thing that I mentioned at the front of this video, there is a 100W pass-through USB-C connection on the back, which can output up to 90 watts of charging power to your laptop. And now, after talking about the specs, let's look at how I use the small dock to power and work with in my complete setup. 
At the front we have a MacBook that is plugged into the main connection which not only transfers data but also power through the connection. Then I have my main editing monitor connected that automatically starts up as soon as the MacBook is connected. On the other hand I drop my SD card into and add one of my three Samsung T5 SSDs to the USB-C connection on the front. I then proceed to create a new folder on my SSD where I drop all my files that are recorded onto and let them actually copy until finished. When finished I begin editing and when that is done I connect my backup drive to the USB-A connection, drop all the files that I have created into my video backup server and let it create a backup of that. All with just the use of one simple, affordable, fast as well as small dock. And now I'm speaking not as a YouTuber trying to sell you this dock to make some affiliate money from it, but as a regular guy who has to create a lot of edits and files also in his daily work for an ad agency. I'm so glad I changed to this dock. This spared me so many headaches since owning and incorporating it into my daily workflow. So uh, would I recommend it? <laughs> yes, of course, definitely. Thank you very much for watching, my name is Leech and I'm off writing the next scripts. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to subscribe to this channel, there are plenty more of this type of content and many other things available for you to watch. Have a great day, see you around and goodbye.